Hello. Welcome to the third lecture on measures of dispersion. Our learning outcome is to draw and interpret box plots. So, what's a box plot, you ask? Well, this is a box plot. This is what it looks like. And some of this will be familiar to you already. You can see that we have the lower quartile. We know this is Q1, the median, Q2, and the upper quartile, Q3. We've also learnt about outliers, and we talk about the lowest value of a data set and the highest value of a data set. And you can see we have a scale at the bottom here to mark the numbers. We can name parts of this diagram. It's called a box plot because the part in the middle looks like a box, and this is determined by the quartiles. We also have these lines here for the lowest value and the highest value, and these are called the whiskers. Now, how do we draw a box plot? Well, we can see from the diagram that we need to know Q1, Q2, and Q3, the quartiles, any outliers, the lowest value that isn't an outlier, and the highest value that isn't an outlier. Once we know these pieces of information, we can draw our box plot. So let's look at an example. Now this data we have seen before. It was in the last video on outliers. And it's a stem and leaf diagram showing the blood glucose of 30 females. But this time we want to draw the box plot to represent the data. Now we've already found Q1 and Q3 and the outliers in our last video and we will use those results today. So please review the last video if you need a reminder on how to find these. But the values were Q1 was 3.2, Q3 was 4.0 and we had one outlier at 5.5. Now we also need to know the highest value and the lowest value. This is very easy to see from a stem and leaf diagram. The lowest value is the first number. The highest value is the last number, but we want the highest value that isn't an outlier. So that will be the next number in, in this case. And we know what these numbers mean. The lowest value, not an outlier, will be 2.2. Two, and the highest value that's not an outlier will be 5.1 because the key, remember, the key tells us what the numbers mean. So the last thing we need to find is Q2, the median. So we need to know the position of the median. We know we have 30 pieces of data, so n is 30. n divided by 2 is 15. Now remember, this is discrete data, and 15 is obviously a whole number, so that means that we want our median is in the position between the 15th and the 16th number, so that's the 15th and a half position. So where is that on our data? Well, the stem and leaf diagram, we need to count along the pieces of data we know that's the first piece, second piece, third piece, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, and then the fifteenth and the sixteenth. And there it is. We need the number between this. Well, they're both the same number. Using the key again, we can see that these numbers are both 3.8. So our median Q2 is 3.8. We now have all of our data. Let's just put it together. Q1 3.2, Q2 3.8, Q3 4.0, one outlier at 5.5, lowest value not an outlier 2.2, and highest value not an outlier 5.1. So let's draw that on the box plot. Where are these numbers on the box plot? The quartiles tell us where the box is. An outlier we use across. And the lowest and highest values that are not outliers, they are the whiskers. 
and here we go. Here's our box plot. So you can see that we have our box for the quartiles, Q1, 3.2, Q2, 3.8, Q3, 4.0. And we have our outlier with a cross at 5.5. And then we have our whiskers, lower whisker at 2.2, upper whisker at 5.1. And with any diagram, we do need to make sure we give it a label and we use a scale so that we can see the numbers from the box plot. So that's our first example. What we also need to do is to compare box plots. So to take two different box plots and make a comparison between them. So let's take a second set of data. This time the blood glucose level of 30 males is recorded. But we only have a summary of the data this time. Here it is. We're not actually given the data itself, just the lower quartile, upper quartile, median, lowest value and highest value. Now, we're asked to draw a box plot, but they have also given us some extra information. They have said, given that there is only one outlier, and that's important because we do need to know if there are any outliers. And we have to represent the data on a box plot with the box plot from the previous example, and then compare the blood glucose level for males and females. Now, we're told that there is only one outlier, but the only actual data values we have been given are the lowest value, 1.4, and the highest value, 5.2. So one of these values must be this outlier. But which one? To make that decision, we'll return to our rule for outliers. And the rule said that an outlier is any value which is either greater than the upper quartile, plus 1.5 times interquartile range, or less than lower quartile, minus 1.5 times interquartile range. Now we are given some information in the question. We're told the lower quartile is 3.6 and the upper quartile is 4.7, so that means we can work out the interquartile range which is Q3 minus Q1, 4.7 minus 3.6 is 1.1. So, let's put those numbers into the various formula. So remember, the formula was Q1 minus 1.5 times interquartile range, I will call it IR, or Q3 plus 1.5 times interquartile range. And putting our numbers in, 3.6 minus 1.5 times 1.1 is 1.95. 4.7 plus 1.5 times 1.1 is 6.35. So that means that these are the boundary values for the outliers. Now remember, our lowest value is 1.4 and our highest value is 5.2. So let's compare those two values to the boundary values for the outliers. And we can see that 1.4 is in fact less than 1.95. But 5.2 is not greater than 6.35. So what does this tell us? It tells us that we have the one outlier, which is 1.4. OK, we're nearly ready to draw, but we do have one problem. The lowest value is 1.4, but it's also the one outlier. Hmm. So does that mean that we draw a cross for the outlier at 1.4? And if we do draw a cross for the outlier at 1.4, then what do we use for the lower whisker? What's the value of the lower whisker? We don't have any other data. So what value is next, the next one to the outlier? Well, the answer is we use the lower boundary value from the outlier criteria. 
And remember, that was 1.95. We said outliers had to be less than 1.95, so 1.4 was less than 1.95. Yeah. So that means that this one can be our outlier and one point sorry and the 1.95 can be our whisker so what about the other whisker well the other whisker that's easy because that can just be our highest value 5.2 because we didn't have any outliers at the top end of the range so let's draw our box plot and here it is and you can see that the lower whisker has been drawn at 1.95 and the upper whisker has been drawn at 5.2 with our outlier at 1.4. And we also have our female data on here as well. Now we do use the same scale for both box plots so that we can compare both of the box plots. The second part of the question asked us to compare the box plots. Now when we're comparing box plots, we think of two things. First of all, think of our measure of location. Now remember measures of location, that's mean, median and mode. Well, the only thing we actually know on these two diagrams is the median, Q2. And here are the two values for Q2, the male, was at 4.0, the female was at 3.8. The other thing that we want to consider is measures of spread. Now, the two measures of spread we have here is we have the range from the highest value to the lowest value, including the outlier. So there are the two ranges. They are both measures of spread and we can see that the male has a larger range than the female. The other measure of spread is the interquartile range, which is from Q1 to Q2. And we can see that with that, ooh, what's happening there? We can see that in our data, excuse the wonky line please, that the interquartile range is less for the females than it is for the males. So think about measures of location, think about measures of spread, but put your answers in context of the question. In other words, don't just talk about numbers, talk about, in this case, blood glucose. So what we can say is the median blood glucose for the females is lower than the median blood glucose for the males, and the interquartile range, the female has a smaller box than the males, and the range of blood glucose is also smaller for the females. So this means there is less range, less variety in the female blood glucose than the male blood glucose. So those are two examples. Now try the question. <laughs> 